In our journey to find uh, a most powerful or a best test, let's simplify things by working with what we might call a simple versus simple test. And what we mean by that is we have a null hypothesis that is a simple hypothesis as we defined uh, earlier in unit six. And the alternative is also simple. And so this is a pretty uh, contrived uh, case to start with. Uh, it means that we're trying to test whether theta is equal to one value versus theta being equal to another value. Well, that rarely happens. We often think that uh, the parameter of interest could be uh, within some interval. And so uh, this is not a very real world example, but it allows us to prove some powerful theorems that then generalize. So that's why we start with it. So what we'd like to do is have a test of size alpha. And rather than give a rejection rule, uh, we can give a critical region, C, of size alpha. And what we're doing when we try to find a test of size alpha is that we want the probability that the data, so this is a vector of x1 through xn, that's our sample data, uh, the probability that the data falls within the critical region calculated under the null hypothesis is equal to alpha. That's what it would mean to have a test of size alpha. The problem is that, you know, there are many uh, tests of size alpha. So there are many uh, critical regions C that uh, would satisfy this criterion. So the important question for us is how can we compare tests of size alpha? What does it mean to say that one test of size alpha is better than another test of size alpha? So let's think about uh, two different tests of size alpha. So test one has a critical region C1, and C1 is the set of all x. So take our data points, um, and we'll define the critical region to be the function g of x being greater than some constant C1. And test number two will be critical region C2, and it will be the set of all uh, vectors x such that some other function of x is greater than some other constant C2. And let's suppose that for both of these, the probability that x lands in the critical region under the null hypothesis is equal to alpha. So for both of these tests, they're both tests of size alpha. And let's further suppose that the power function associated with the first test, so the test with critical region C1, is less than the power function for critical region C2. So the question here is which test is better, right? We have two tests, they're both of size alpha, so that means they're on equal footing for comparison. We've fixed the rate of type one error. And now we have information that says, well, I think the power for C1, the test associated with critical region one is lower than the test, uh, the power of the test associated with C2. So it turns out that in this case, uh, test number two is better because the power is higher, right? A higher power is better for a test of size alpha. So more generally, we could say that if we're testing simple hypotheses, so an H naught, a null hypothesis that theta is equal to theta naught, an alternative that theta is equal to theta one, and we're doing that with a random sample x1 through xn, C is called the best critical region of size alpha if, well, it's a test of size alpha. That's what the first condition says. It has to be a test of size alpha. And if A is any other uh, set such that, um, well, this should be an A here. So if A is another critical region such that uh, 
it's a critical region of size alpha, then it must be the case that the power function for C of theta is greater than the power function on A of theta. So this says just what we sort of reasoned through before. You've got two tests of size alpha, and one of them is better just in case it has a higher power. Now let's look at uh, so, uh, an example in context. So suppose we have one random variable x with a binomial distribution 5p. You can also think about this example as having five Bernoullis, right? And suppose that our alpha, so our, our size or probability of type 1 error is uh, 1 over 32. And suppose we're testing uh, a simple hypothesis versus a simple hypothesis. So the null is that um, P, the probability of success, is 1 half. And the alternative is that it's 0.75. So maybe you have a friend who has a coin and you're willing to make bets with that person, but you think that the coin comes from one of two possible worlds. One is that it's a fair coin. The other one is that your friend is trying to be deceptive and the coin is biased towards heads, um, meaning three quarters of the time in the long run it will land on heads and a quarter it'll land on tails. So suppose we had two different critical regions. One is that uh, x, which is a binomial 5p, is equal to zero, which means that you get zero heads in five tosses. The other critical region is that x is equal to 5, which means that you get 5 heads in 5 tosses. So think about what your intuition should say is a better critical region here. Intuition says that you should reject if you get many heads, right? Because many heads would point more towards a coin biased towards heads than it would towards a fair coin. And so it seems like this critical region, critical region number two, is better than critical region number one. Because if you decided to reject if you got zero heads, rejecting means overturning the null in favor of the alternative. You would be saying uh, getting zero heads is evidence that the coin is biased towards heads. That would be a bad critical region. Intuition says, well, actually, if you get a lot of heads, that's in favor of a coin bias towards heads. So intuition tells us C2 is better. But how can we actually uh, build up some mathematical evidence for this? Well, the first thing we need to do is recognize that both of these are of size alpha. So C1 and C2 are of size alpha. And if they weren't both of size alpha, then it wouldn't make sense to actually compare them. So the comparison that we just walked through based on our intuition wouldn't make that much sense if we didn't already know that they were of size alpha. So I'll let you compute that probability. It's really the probability that x is equal to 0, given that uh, the probability of success is 0.5, so under the null, and then the probability that x is equal to 5, given that uh, p is, is 0.5. Both of those will be 1 over 32. So what we really need to do here is calculate uh, gamma of C1 of 0.75 because this is the power um, for C1. And this would be the probability that x is equal to 0 under the assumption that p is equal to 0.75. And this you could compute um, by hand, you can put it in R. This will be 1 over 1024. And then the power function for C2 will be gamma of C2 evaluated at 0.75. So this is the probability that x is 5 under the assumption that p is 0.75. And this is equal to 243 over 1024. And this should blend with our intuition because 
uh, the power function for C2 is greater than the power function for C1. So our intuition said C2 is better, and when we calculate the power, we see that we actually get a higher power, which means that this notion of setting up a best test being the test that among tests of size alpha has the higher power function uh, seems like a reasonable way to, uh, to rank tests.